So I got this thing from a friend. It's a regulate relay type RE03. Commonly used on DCS 1300, 1400. And what I want to do is take it apart, see exactly how it's built and how it functions. If you're curious, keep watching. So before taking this thing apart, let's first understand what the purpose of this is in a normal car. Basically, you got your battery from which you supply various things throughout the car and this battery discharges. So you got to recharge it. And for that, you've got your alternator. Three phase motor with a massive full bridge rectifier. Now your alternator is always connected to the drive shaft. So whenever the car is running, this thing basically can charge the battery. So what do you do to prevent it from destroying the battery, from overcharging it? Since you have no switch on the power lines. Well, the trick is when you're making electric energy using a motor, you need a permanent magnet and some coils, which need to be rotating. We got the coils, they're rotating, but we don't have a permanent magnet. And this is where our voltage regulator relay comes into play. The magnet is actually an electromagnet in the alternator, meaning when you supply this coil, you got your magnetic field and you can charge the battery. No magnetic field, no charging. So we got this charging coil connected to a comparator, which measures the battery voltage. It's also supplied from battery and it's using an internal reference, roughly around 13.5 volts. This is standard for 12 volt batteries. So we got an internal 13.5 volt reference. And basically this is what our regulator relay is. Okay. Let's take it apart and see exactly what's inside. For that, it's built pretty simply, it has these, has this plastic cover on it, and to take it apart, the only thing holding it together seems to be this rivet. So I will need to remove the rivet and then we can see what's inside. So I don't break my table, I'll just add this piece of wood and let's see what size of drill do we need. 3mm, yeah, this should do. It's out. So let's see what's inside. Well, not a very complicated circuit as it seems. We've got our supply pin, the DF, the output pin, the red wire, the voltage monitor pin. Everything is on a nice little board filled with some sort of varnish to prevent this thing from breaking when exposed to high humidity, two transistors, a couple of diodes, and a bigger thing that I guess is a transistor, but it says diode here, so D530. The PCB on which all these components are placed is actually a, an aluminum substrate PCB. It's not a normal FR4. This is done to help with heat dissipation. We're using this large ground plate as a heat, sh heat sink. And we want to get the heat from our main switch transistor out into the heat plate as easily as possible. And apparently they use this white glue thing. Now what we can do is reverse engineer this thing since there's only like 10 components here. We can try to make a schematic from it. Let's try and do that. So if I did everything right, this is basically what we got on the board. So we got our power transistor, most probably a P-channel MOSFET. This is the source, drain and gate. So we got our source, the drain is connected directly to the output. We have our 
protection diode between the output and ground in case it's reversely connected or we got any sort of inductive spikes coming back from our coil and the main comparator part in this circuit is this circuit this little transistor here now most likely this is some sort of voltage reference circuit maybe even the TL431 based on the markings on it you can't really tell what exactly it is let's just redraw this so basically what we can see already although this diode might just be a zener and this might be a simple transistor but we'll find out about that later our transistor is always switched on using this 900 ohm resistor quite small but maybe they had a reason for this so basically what this circuit will do is when you have more than 13 and a half volts it will drive the gate of the p channel mosfet high and the circuit will turn off preventing a voltage going to the output let's see exactly how this piece is built if we consider this to be a transistor then based on the type of capsule it is it should have its collector its base and its emitter now if we look a bit more closely this capacitor is not connected here but rather here and that's about it let's redraw this one more time since this is such a low value most probably this is not a field effect transistor but rather a bipolar transistor that's why you need such a large such a small gate resistor so we will redraw this as a bipolar transistor a pnp And if we consider this transistor to be PNP type, circuit is slowly starting to make sense. Also, this diode needs to be considered a Zener for this thing to work. So we will simply redraw it as a Zener diode. When our voltage monitor reaches a certain threshold, high enough voltage, we will have current flowing through our PNP transistor through the Zener to this voltage divider. This will switch on our second PMP transistor, which will drive our base to a high voltage, switching the whole circuit off. Basically, this is how this little thing works. Normally our output transistor is on, but when the voltage through the thinner exceeds its threshold voltage, the second PMP transistor turns on, switching off the whole circuit and turning off charging of the battery so hope you like this video let me know in the comments your thoughts if you'd like me to make more videos of this kind please subscribe to my channel to be up to date with all the latest videos and see you next time bye bye